Let's talk about how to import shape files as SF objects in R. So in my experience, a data scientist is most likely to work with SF objects that are obtained from importing a shape file into R. If you're not familiar with a shape file, then ArcGIS defines a shape file as a shape file is a simple non-topological format for storing the geometric location and attribute information of geographic features. Geographic features in a shapefile can be represented by points, lines, or polygons, areas. And this is in the What is a Shapefile web page uh, that's available on the website, shown in the bottom left-hand corner. And notice that this really just describes simple features, right? So you can talk about having geometric location and attribute information. The geographic features can be represented by points, lines, or polygons, which are the most simple geometry types that you can use uh, in simple features. And so generally you can import a shape file into R as an, SF, as an SF object. Each row is going to be an observation related to a geometry object. Uh, there should be a geometry column when you import that object that contains the geometry object for each observation. And this is going to be our geometry list column. And the other columns are going to represent the attributes associated with each geometry object. So shape files are actually widely available. You, you may not be super familiar with them, but shapefiles are very commonly used for people who work with geographic data. If you're doing anything with geographic information systems, I think shapefiles are pretty much the lifeblood of those things. But you may, may be wondering, where do I get a shapefile? Uh, so shapefiles can represent many kinds of spatial objects, such as counties, census tracts, zip code tabulation areas, which are often abbreviated ZCTAs, states, countries, etc. Uh, there are even shape files that can be used to describe other spatial objects or geographic objects like roads, rivers, lakes, etc. And if you want to find a shape file, oftentimes you can honestly just do a simple web search with the appropriate terms and it will bring up some website that has a shape file that's relevant for what you want to display. So if we search USA shape file, it brings up a Census Bureau web page, which I'll just show here for posterity's sake. So we get this page right here. It actually has many different shape files uh, for many different attributes. Um, I ended up looking at, I ended up downloading this state file here, as we'll see. And so uh, you look up, you find that web page, and most of the time, in my experience, a shape file is going to be a zipped folder, actually. So it's a zipped file you download, and it contains a zipped folder that has many different files inside it. And most of the time, you can simply import the .shp, the shapefile, in that folder. I'm sure there are situations where maybe you need to do something else, you need to do a more complicated import, because there are many complicated features and the functions that we're going to talk about. But for most of the basic stuff you want to do, you can just import the shapefile and that's going to be good enough, This, this the shp file specifically. So how do you actually import the shapefile into R? Well, the function you want to use is the st underscore read function. And typically, we want to provide the shape file to the DSN argument of st underscore read. So if you actually look at the documentation of st underscore read, the first argument is DSN, which stands for data source name. It's basically the file or the file name path uh, of the file that you want to read in. So in this case, I have downloaded the cb underscore 2018 underscore us underscore state underscore 20 m dot zip file from the census bureau website that we looked at previously and that shape file contains essentially polygons or multi polygons for each of the u.s states as well as i think puerto rico guam maybe some other places there's a few other areas as well contained in that shape file and i personally have unzipped this folder on my computer into the data folder in my current working directory. So in my current working directory, I have a data folder and I unzipped the file there, but you want to run the same analysis. So I tried to actually make it pretty easy for you to do the same thing, but let's talk a little bit more about this current working directory thing, because this is actually pretty important and can trip new users of R up, and maybe sometimes even experienced users. So the current working directory is the location to which R is currently reading or saving files. So if you, try to read something in or save a file. This is where R is going to, to read or save those fi a file by default. To learn what your current working directory is, you can run the get wd open 
parentheses, close parentheses in the console, and it will show you what the file path is for your current working directory. And if you want to change your current work direct working directory, then you can use the setwd function and specify a path on your computer. And if that path doesn't exist, then it will actually return an error. Um, but this, you can change where you want to import and save files on your computer pretty easily in that way. So I wanted to show you the current working directory on my computer. So it's this location right here. And in that current working directory, I have a data folder, which I click on here. And then I have extracted, I've unzipped the CB underscore 2018 underscore US underscore state underscore 20 M dot zip file into this folder right here. And if I click this, this is where my dot SHP file is located that I want to read in. And so I'm going to show you how to read that file on your computer. So we want to read this .shp file in this folder that is nested inside the data folder, which is nested inside our current working directory. So how can we figure out how to read this file in? So we need to know a couple things. So one, if you use the notation dot slash dot backslash, it's going to indicate the current directory. Uh, the current working directory. And we're going to specify the DSN argument as dot slash, slash, which is the current working directory, data, which is the next folder that we want to access, slash this folder, which is the next folder we want to access, slash this dot SHP file, which is the file that we want to access. So what this does is it tells R to look for this file in the file path given by here. And so this is the exact folder where this file is located. And that's what we had to give R. To try to make this process easier for you to import the data and follow along with my code, I have uploaded the relevant zip file to my GitHub repository. And prior to importing the .shp file, you want to run this command here, which is going to download the file. So this whole thing right here without the hashtags. So run these two commands right here, or this one command on these two lines in the console. And this is going to download the file into your current working directory in uh, the appropriate place. And then running this command should unzip it to the correct folder. And then you should be able to run this function right here, which is going to read the shape file in. And when you do that, you're going to see something that looks like this. So it tells you kind of what you're reading in here. And we learn several several pieces of helpful information when, by default when we run the st underscore read function. So we know that we imported an SF object. It has, so simple feature collection here, has 52 features, which are observations, and nine fields, which are the other attributes of the SF object. So those are the co other columns besides the geometry column. The features appear to be multi-polygons. This is not super surprising. So simple states can be represented using a polygon, but the because we have some states like Hawaii that are quite complex, they have to be multi-polygons in order to represent the state. The dimension is XY, so we have two-dimensional points. We're working with two-dimensional data. And the bounding box here tells us the smallest and largest X and Y coordinates of our data. And then it actually tells us the the coordinate reference system, which is NAD83 here. So it's not WGS84 like we often see, but this is another popular choice for coordinate reference system. If we use the class function to see the class of the object which we read in, which I called US underscore SF, we see that similar to previous examples, it has two classes, the class SF for being a simple feature object, and it is also a class data dot frame. If we look at the structure of the US underscore SF object, then we see that we have an object with classes SF and data frame and SF object, 52 observation of 10 variables, 10 variables because we have nine attributes. And then we also have the geometry list column, which is shown here. It's the geometry column of the US underscore SF object. And we can see column names here. And you can kind of guess what these are. If you're experienced with these things, you can guess what these are. So some of these, I don't really know what they mean. It's never been important to me. GeoID often shows up as kind of like a unique identifier that you can use potentially to identify the different observations. 
In this case, we have STUSPS, which is our the state USPS abbreviation codes. We have the name of the states, which is really useful. We have area of land, so how much land area is in each state. We have area of water, which is the amount of area in each state. And then, as I mentioned, we have the geometry list column 